hey guys, the Pluto return actually happened. Oh my gosh, the Pluto return is here. It happened on Sunday, this past Sunday, February the 20th of 2022, to 2022. And here we are. The first domino has toppled and we don't even know what it is yet. Although I think we all might actually have a pretty good idea uh, if we look a little bit more geopolitically at what happened exactly on that date and in the few days since as far as Ukraine and Russia and I don't know, we have a lot to talk about. So I'm Ali, Ali Duzet. Um, find me at aliduzette.com. And aliduzetclasses.com is my classes hub where I have a bunch of free stuff. Ah, and I hope you go and start taking classes there. It's really fun. Uh, I have five kids. My Facebook group is Intuitive Healing with Ali Duzet. I have a bunch of books on Amazon. Go check it out. Okay. So recap of the Pluto return. Pluto returns happen about every 250 years. So most nations don't survive that long. Uh, the ones that do that have a Pluto return typically undergo massive transformation. And a lot of times it is not very fun. America's first Pluto return just took place on February 20th, 2022. But Pluto is going to go retrograde this year. So what that means is it's been kind of going forward until it hit that 27 degrees of Capricorn. But from our perspective, it's going to look like Pluto's going backwards. Uh, and it's going to hit 27 degrees Capricorn again in July. And then it's going to go forward again and hit 27 degrees of Capricorn again in December. So we are actually kind of going to have three Pluto returns this year, even though it typically takes about 250 years. And it's just because Pluto is kind of going to be dancing back and forth over that spot just a few times between now and uh, December 28th is the last Pluto return. So this is a Pluto-tastic year for the United States. Um, but according to my research, it takes about 12 years for all of this transformation to be happening. So a lot of times what, what has happened historically is the Pluto return happens for, you know, Rome, for England, whatever. Nothing happens or like, you know, something might happen. Maybe a leader is, um, you know, dethroned or... Uh, you know, these, these different things happen that, you know, are certainly chaotic in the moment, but that is just the beginning because by 12 years later, there's usually been like some wars, there's been like big upheaval. Um, and so there's kind of, in my opinion, this, this 12 year period that, uh, that we're just starting to enter right this minute, like the door opened, it opened on Sunday, the 20th of February. So I want to talk about what we're looking at, and these are the rules. Number one, no going crazy and no panicking. We don't have any reason to panic, okay? Everything is in the hands of our creator. We are going to be okay. We are going to have exactly the experience that we need. And so on a personal level, we are okay. And as long as we put in the work to get ourselves in alignment with the divine, we have no reason to be upset. So take your deep breaths. We're going to talk about these things, but please don't go crazy. Okay, now is the time for spiritual, emotional, and mental preparation, and that is what I'm all about. And so I have a ton of, again, classes at alliedusetclasses.com. I hope you go start in the free stuff, and, and that is going to start setting the stage for your preparation if you need help in that arena, and maybe you don't, but if you do, go check it out. Now, this stuff is by nature unpredictable. We can look at the flavor of what's coming and, you know, make some guesses about it, but we can't know the exact details. And I've done another video on what we learned from January the 12th of 2020. Um, the, the chart for, 20, for that date, for January the 12th of 2020, looking back on it, you can see how everything that happened in 2020 uh, aligns with the chart, but, but the day of that chart of that chart's creation. You know, when I was looking at it beforehand, I had some guesses about what it, what things might look like, but I didn't, I mean, I couldn't know. I didn't know what was coming. Um, at the same time, in those early days, people were starting to talk about, uh, you know, sickness and uh, things going on in China. And so we had some hints, but even with all the hints, we couldn't know exactly everything that was going to happen. And it's the same here. You know, since the Pluto return happened, 
as of this recording, what, three days ago, uh, Russia did indeed invade Ukraine and or or like annex it or whatever they have done. And um, so we can kind of guess, OK, that's probably going to be a big player in what's going on. But we can't know the exact details, but we can look at the flavor. Um, and so I always, again, I just want to remind everybody, I'm just some lady on the internet. So of course, rely on your own connection with the divine to guide you in what you need to know. And so that you can be prepared for whatever is coming next in your own life. Um, I don't know. I'm not perfect. Don't think that I am. Let me just, uh, you know, remove that illusion from you right now. I'm not perfect. I don't always get things right. So this is just my opinion. And we're just going to take a look at uh, you know, what I think about this, and you can think something different. So when do we expect big things? When With 2020, I did not expect super big things right away. And indeed, nothing seemed to happen on January the 12th of 2020, although by the 21st, the president had shut down the border between the U.S. and China. And by March, things were very different, right? We had our two weeks to stop the spread, all of that. Okay, now the Pluto return uh, took place at 2.28 p.m. Eastern um, on February the 20th, and by 3.15 a.m. Eastern time on the 21st, the Washington Post was reporting that Russia had ordered troops to the separatist regions of Ukraine. Okay, so not even 12 hours later, our newspapers were reporting on this. And so clearly, I mean, clearly that exact date, there was something going on. And here we are, Russian troops, you know, in the separatist regions of Ukraine. I don't even know if that's the appropriate way to refer to these things, um, to, the, to the regions, I don't know. But the one thing that I do know is this really seems to remind me of some other uh, historical events that have happened in the past where things were invading other things and it became a really big thing, right? So, um, okay. Now, January the 20, uh, January the 12th of 2020, again, was the prelude to this moment. That is the moment that many astrologers were saying, okay, this is going to mark the prelude to the Pluto return. And nothing happened that day, very obvious, but again, by March and April, we knew, okay, the world of 2019 is over forever, and this is some weird new thing. It's just a new weird thing. So the silence at the beginning of 2020 after that conjunction lasted about 12 weeks out of the total 110 weeks of that period of, from January the 12th of 2020 to February the 20th of 2022. So it was about 10% of the total that was quiet. Uh, this first Pluto return lasts from February the 20th to July 11th, and it already looks like big things are happening. We only have 20 weeks of the first Pluto return, and basically right now we're at 19 and a half weeks left. So how long is it going to be that things will be quote unquote silent? You know, how long will it be until the quote unquote two weeks to stop the spread for whatever it is that we're dealing with now? And I don't have an answer to that, but if it is 10% of the time, then maybe we have a week and a half before something, I don't know, pretty drastic that seems to affect everybody would occur. So, and what would that be? I have, again, no idea, but, uh, but we'll just keep a look at it and see what happens. So these are some, some flavors for the next 20 weeks. I just went ahead and brought up the chart and I ran it from Philadelphia, but it's really supposed to be from Washington DC, but I, I double checked it and it's, it's the same. So it's fine. Um, okay. The first thing that we need to be aware of is the sun in the eighth house. Uh, oh, one second, baby, don't do that. Come back. Okay. Um, so in a, what's called a mundane reading, um, astrologically, that means relating to like geopolitics instead of a personal chart. Uh, the sun 
represents the leader, like the president, the prime minister. And the eighth house equals the house of death and transformation. What is going to die? What is going to have a big change? And here we can see this little guy is the sun. And this little section is the eighth house. So we have the sun in the eighth house. Uh, to me, this is indicating that perhaps in the next 20 weeks, we could have a transition of some leadership on, you know, some kind of level. Um, and I've been really looking at this, Mars and Venus exact at 19 degrees of Capricorn. This, this, uh, the two things together make me wonder if we could have a transition from male leadership to female leadership um, in at least one area of government. Okay, we have uh, Mars and Venus again exact in the sixth house. Now the sixth house, uh, well, okay, first we'll talk about Mars and Venus. Mars relates to masculine energies in the military. Venus can refer to feminine energies and the women and children and civilians. This, this also will deal with them. Um, oh, well, no, sorry, I, I missed it. Delete, delete that sentence. Okay, so these are Mars and Venus. And uh, so I've been kind of feeling like everybody in America is going to be dealing with issues of um, masculine versus feminine internally in their personal relationships. Um, in, but also on a larger scale than that. When I was doing more research on mundane astrology and saw that Mars equals the military, Venus can equal civilians. That is just a, I don't know, you can interpret that for yourself. Um, how will it show up? I don't know, but it looks like there is um, a closeness here between the two things of military and civilians. Um, this is in the sixth house and the sixth house can deal with, um, sorry, my baby. The, the sixth house can deal with um, health. And so this is actually the house that governs pandemics. Um, this is the house that governs um, uh, kind of like everyday life. So this is going to be a pervasive energy and it will be interesting to see if, um, you know, what is the, what is the ongoing, uh, so, sorry, hi, baby. Uh, what is the ongoing ramification of, you know, the pandemic stuff and, and sickness stuff on a national level? Okay, another thing to take a note at with this chart is this. This is the Midheaven. Uh, and that kind of deals with what what a chart is kind of known for what is uh its contribution to the world at large and it's pointing straight at aries which is the sign of uh it goes with mars and of course we get the word marshal from mars as in uh like military so what are what is this going to be known for well, I don't know, maybe some Aries energy. Aries gets things started. It starts a new thing. Aries can jump into things without thinking first. And Aries, um, yeah, is the, is the one in charge of military stuff. Uh, so, so that is interesting. And it is right here next to Chiron. That's this green key. And Chiron deals with our greatest soul wounds and also our possibility for greatest healing. So on a, I mean, when I was looking at this chart weeks ago, the thing that I was thinking of with this Chiron placement was that, uh, you know, one thing that, that has been very heavily discussed lately has been, um, you know, America's, you know, history with prejudice and that kind of thing. And that's been like a hot topic and um, Aries also deals with the physical body. And so prejudice against different people based on their physical body. I thought, okay, maybe this is going to be a flavor of these next five months is going to be America really dealing with uh, wounding in this area and healing in this area. Uh, and that I think that is one possible valid interpretation, but here's another one. Uh, Chiron in the 10th house is an invitation for people to, to step up for anybody. Like if this is in your natal chart and you have Chiron in the 10th house, uh, 
Chiron in the 10th house invites the native to step up and contribute to the to the world at large. And as I was kind of studying this placement, I thought, you know, people are not as politically active as perhaps they should be. And this has been the case for a long time. A lot of us get wrapped up in our lives and I mean, even entertainment for a lot of us, for a lot of us, maybe we don't even know when our caucus meetings are because we didn't bother to check or, um, or we don't want to go because we don't want to put in the time to figure out how it works and to research the candidates. And on a political level, you can see how America, I don't know, probably some might say that America would be better off if more people were informed and politically involved. And so when I look at this now, I'm thinking maybe this is a reminder um, that first off, we're going to deal with the wound that has come from kind of sleeping on the job and not not being as active as we needed to be and not keeping up with the bills and legislature and not getting to know our representatives and communicating with them. Maybe this is the time that we're going to see some real ramifications of our own laziness, basically, not, not to call us all lazy, um, but just to say that there's probably more that a lot of people could have done this whole time to prevent the situations that we find ourselves in now. And now might be a time where we see the fruits of that. Um, and at the same time, we're being invited to step up and fix it. So are you going to go to your caucus meetings? Are you going to go and study the candidates? Are you going to get involved with, uh, you know, poll watching, like they need poll watchers and poll judges and like, you know, are you just going to get involved with the process and how you contribute to the governance of our nation as a whole? And yeah, we're all like individual people. I don't expect anybody watching this as a senator or representative or something like that. Although if you are, hello, I'm glad you're here. But um, most of us aren't. And and that's okay. There are There are things that all of us can do on a smaller scale that are going to make a difference. And so we have this this invitation to maybe do that. So that is one interpretation of that as well. And so all of these things can be interpreted in a bunch of different ways. And so that's why you can't really make any predictions because you just don't know how it's going to show up. Okay. This is Pallas uh, with the little diamond head. And Pallas goes with Pallas Athena, right? Who was the Greek goddess of military strategy and strategic thinking. And so she is right here close to the midheaven as well and uh, palace can also go with the internet and it's right next to the midheaven oh at two degrees of aries and what what happened was i was talking with a friend um a day or two ago about the pluto return and this friend is um very involved with uh internet security for like big companies and whatever and and he said that one of his big concerns was um, cyber attacks from, you know, these other nations in the world. And I said, oh, cyber attacks. I wonder where Palace would be on the Pluto return chart. And of course, where is it? It's in the martial sign of Aries <laughs> right next to the midheaven and with an orb of Chiron, well, an eight degree orb. And so, so I don't know. I saw that and I thought, oh man, I wonder how grounded his concerns are um, in the possibility of cyber attacks. And of course, um, if you do some research on it, I mean, this friend was telling me about um, some attacks on like a, a water uh, purification thing. I'm sorry, you can probably hear my weird cat in the background. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> she's hungry and it's not my cat, it's my parents' cat and they need to go feed her. Um, but Anyway, uh, Palace, I, I wonder, oh, this, so the cyber attack on a water treatment facility in Pennsylvania where they like changed what was allowed in the water. And can you imagine if a rival nation wanted to mess with us and they could just secretly sneak in and mess with the water supply and nobody would even notice right away and all of our computers would say that the water was fine. Uh, that could be a really interesting situation. Um, so, so anyway, just something to keep an eye on. When, when, when my friend said, what about cyber attacks? And I saw this chart, I thought, you know, that could be an interpretation. It doesn't have to be, and that may not happen, um, but it would be a valid interpretation of this chart in my own personal opinion.
Okay. Pluto here is in the seventh house and Pluto again, uh, as you know, by now it deals with death and rebirth and the seventh house deals with alliances on a geopolitical level. And up here we have Juno, which is the goddess of marriage and loyalty in Aquarius and Aquarius does its own thing. Aquarius, nobody can tell Aquarius what to do. And so when I look at this, uh, what I'm seeing is the possibility of a death and rebirth on an alliance level and also perhaps the uh, decision to uh, do things our own way you know or you know Aquarius is just very unpredictable it uh, I don't know marches to the beat of its own drum and it's it's not a natural alliance energy. Let's just put it that way. Like it's not, I mean, Libra, Libra is the natural alliance energy and it will do what it takes to get along. And Aquarius just won't. It's like, you don't like it sucks for you, like deal with it. <laughs> so, so this is an interesting, an interesting placement here. And I don't think I mentioned at all this Saturn here, which is also an Aquarius, but in the eighth house, Saturn calls back our consequences and uh, so when I look at that, I think, first off, Aquarius also deals with humanitarian impulses. So that would be like being the world's policeman. It would be a, probably an Aquarian type of thing because it wants to save everybody. All of these kind of savior impulses that America has engaged in for the past 250 years. I don't know. We may see some consequences of that in what kind of transformation we experience. I am hearing the word NATO and just thinking, I wonder how much of what we see is going to be involved in the fact that, you know, America has been pretty much the, the big player of NATO for so long. And now all of this is going to shake up alliances and... I mean, geez, I don't really know. I, I have no idea, but we'll just have to keep an eye on it, see for ourselves what shows up. Okay, this is a Grand Trine water, this blue circle. Ding, 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 ding. It goes from our ascendant at 24 degrees of Cancer, ding, 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 to Neptune at 22 degrees of Pisces, and then down here to the South Node. So Neptune in a, in a mundane chart can deal with collectivism, like this is, uh, so basically in a, when you're reading for a political entity, Neptune can represent kind of like socialism and left-wing stuff. Uranus deals with more like the right-wing type of stuff. Uh, so left-wing, right-wing, and here the left-wing energy is uh, trining into the Scorpio South Node. So that's like the skeletons in our closet. Okay, it's our baggage that we have to deal with. And again, this is our nodal path, is to deal with this stuff and it's trining into the, the collectivist impulses. And then the, uh, the ascendant is the face that we put on for the world to see. So when I look at that grand trine water, I'm wondering if we're going to see kind of a little trend towards the more collectivist side of things. Uh, at least for, you know, between February and July of 2022, as we are working to, okay, let's put it this way. They may not be consciously working on the baggage around this stuff, but that is what will be happening. That is what will be happening. Oh, come here, baby. Come on. Okay, the moon is in the fourth house in Libra, and the moon can indicate where national attention is going in a in a political chart like this. So the fourth house deals with our home and, and in a geopolitical chart, it's gonna deal with land and crops and farming. So where is the national attention going to be flowing? Possibly on food and yeah. on our land. And uh, so we'll just have to see how true that is over time. I mean, by the end of July, we'll, we'll know if this was uh, an accurate reading or not. Libra deals with what is fair. Libra is the scales of justice. That is what this is, like the equal sign, but it's also a, a scale. And it's always weighing, weighing what is fair, okay? And so this could be a very big focus. And I think it has been a big focus leading up to this chart. We have all seen an increasing obsession with fairness. Um, and not always, I mean, like, here's the thing. What is fair? 
to people is really subjective in, you know, I'm sure there must be an objective way of fairness. Hi, baby. Shush, shush, shush. But um, there's a lot of subjective decisions about what is fair and what is not fair. And so I think we're going to see more, more discussions of that. And uh, so the thing about Libra, a Libra can kind of go two different directions. The first way, it can sweep things under the rug in order to keep the peace. And on the other hand, it can go absolutely crazy defending what is fair. So, and it doesn't have to do either of those things. Like Libra can also just be a very even keeled energy that notices what is fair and, you know, takes appropriate, step, uh, appropriate steps to establish the boundaries to make things fair. Um, but in this chart, like, here's the thing. I don't think that any of the energies here are exceptionally healthy. So I am not looking at this chart like, how would a healthy chart handle this? I don't think that that is what will happen. Um, so it will be interesting to see. I would, I would bet there will be a little bit of a dichotomy between the people that are going to ignore things that are happening uh, in the world to keep the peace. And then there's going to be other people that are going absolutely crazy because they see what is not fair and they, they just feel this intense urge to fix it and to defend whatever they feel is right. And so that's going to look really different person to person. Like, so for example, one, one example could be like reparations, right? Where some people feel like it's so like, we have to have reparations. Like that is the only way to make things fair. And then on the other side, there's going to be people that are going to be like, no, that's like the opposite of fair. It's not fair. And so they're both motivated by their ideas of what is fair. They have really different ideas about what is fair, even around the same topic, and it can lead to contention. And so it will be interesting to see how this plays out, both in what gets ignored and who ignores it. And then who, like what people are paying attention to, who those people are that are paying attention and then how they handle it. So what is going to be shifting in July? Uh, okay, one second. Um, so in July, so this is July's chart for July 11th, 2022. Uh, okay. The sun is going to be in the eighth house again and Mercury at 13 degrees. And I didn't pull up the joint chart, but uh, the United States is ascendant is actually at 13 degrees of cancer here. So it kind of makes me wonder if, you know, we're going to be on a front and center on the geopolitical stage and the messaging that our nation is trying to put out is going to be the center stage at that time. So uh, the sun here in the eighth house, uh, this is again, dealing with transformation. So we may still have some, um, I don't know, whatever kind of transformation in leadership, whatever that could mean, whether that's switching around how things are led or who is doing the leading. And it doesn't just have to be on like a presidential level, but it could be um, on kind of a whole stratosphere of, maybe that's a bad word for it. What is it? I like this different strati, stratuses. I don't know. Like there's many tiers of leadership all the way down through our nation in particular, because we have um, at least allegedly a representative uh, you know, democratic republic. And so will we see big transformations on maybe a state level too? I don't know. But, or, or even like within different government agencies, we'll just see. But the eighth house can also deal with things that people don't want to look at and don't want to deal with. And so when I see the, when I see Mercury here in the eighth house, it makes me wonder what is not going to be said? Like what, what, so the eighth house, it can deal with what do you want? What do you not want to hear? What are the messages that have to be said that nobody wants to hear? And that can be, and it can also be what is being hidden from us? Like what will not be told? What part of the story about our core identity because our natural American uh, sun is at 13 degrees. So like, what is the story that we won't get to hear about, about I don't know, America, I don't know. Okay, Venus in the eighth house. Venus can deal with money because it is uh, the feminine energy and feminine is recepting, receiving. Um, so this is where we look at money on a chart. And 
in the eighth house, what, what money will be hidden or transformed? That is a question that we'll see for ourselves. Taurus also deals with money and this is Uranus shaking things up. Again, if you've watched my other videos, Uranus is in Taurus for the first time since the Great Depression. So we're having a Uranus return of the Great, Repres of the Great Depression. And so that could be, uh, I don't know, we could see some shakeups as far as land and physical stuff and money and value, basically. What is considered valuable? And Mars in, Venus, Mars in uh, Taurus might lead to some people feeling a little upset about whatever is going on. Okay. Here in this chart, we have a very prominent Grand Trine water. Okay, and it involves a bunch of different stuff. You can see one end, here's another end, here's another end. Uh, water deals with emotions and dissolving and evolving. So what I'm seeing here is a time like high emotions on a personal level and on a national level and a big invitation. Look at that. This south node conjunct the ascendant. This is our unresolved baggage and our ancestral issues and the stuff, again, hidden stuff that's being brought to the surface to be processed. And down here, we have collectivism right next to the sign for money. Uh, the other one, uh, we have Venus and Juno both deal with money and collectivism with money, dealing with our un unwanted baggage, the stuff that's been hiding from us. This would be the place where the conspiracies hang out would be over here. Conspiracies taking form is over here. Collectivism up here, our core self. Our core self and who is taking care of us, okay? How are we, how are we being nurtured and fed? Series deals with cereal or like this is the asteroid series and literally cereal like your breakfast cereal is named after her. She's the goddess of the harvest. And so we're looking at the harvest and collectivism and money and ooh, you know, again, Scorpio deals with the stuff you don't want to deal with. And so I don't know, you can infer what you will. In this July chart, we have Uranus in the seventh house again, dealing with alliances. So what kind of shakeups are we going to see between July and December 28th? We'll just have to see for ourselves. But the one thing that I will say is this is the North Node. To me, when I saw this, I thought, okay, whatever happens in the next year, we get this chance to choose into trusting the divine and divine timing. You know, we don't have all the answers, but our divine source, our creator has the answers. And we can trust that as things are experiencing some big upheaval, that we personally can be taken care of and that our divine source is going to take care of us and that it's all being watched and known. Okay, so here's the quick review. No panicking. We're not going to freak out. We're keeping our, our eye on what's going on. Um, but the, the most important thing is to make sure that our own hearts are in a place where we can have the faith to receive the miracles in exactly the moments that we personally need them. Okay. The divine wants to care for all of us. Can we trust our creator to lead us and guide us and provide for us? That to me is the number one thing here. We have to practice trusting now. Now is the time for us to tune in to our own hearts and our own bodies, right? We experience revelation through the vessel of our physical bodies and the sensations that we feel in our body. And so we get to tune into our own bodies and, and the ask our creator, you know, what do I need to do to prepare? Like, what do I need to do to prepare my heart? What do I need to do to practice listening so that in every moment I can be led to exactly the right place at the right time so I can be kept safe and sheltered and fed, even if, you know, other things are going on that are maybe scary or, you know, uh, crazy and an upheaval how, what do I need to do so that I don't have to feel like I'm going crazy and I'm in upheaval? We get to remember that this is all in the divine plan, okay? I feel that with all of this, uh, I mean, we have the, the South Node in Scorpio right now. To me, that does show that this is a time when the, the conspiring men are able to kind of bring their conspiracies forth and make them into reality, 
okay, that is an energy that is happening this year, but, um, but that's, that's just one part of the story. There's something much greater at work than just the works of men. And to me, that is the truth of what is reflected in the stars. There's a bigger plan here. We can trust in that. We can watch, uh, you know, the plans of men show up and do what they will on this earth, but we are actually not of this earth. Like we are, and our bodies are made of this planet, right? We eat this planet and we become this planet and we are this planet, but our souls transcend that. And our souls can transcend this too. Like we can have an embodied experience with whatever is happening and be present and grounded within our own bodies. And we can keep that bigger perspective that this is all in divine timing, that we are in the hands of our creator, that things are going to be okay if we trust and we need to resolve our own inner baggage so that we're not distracted by trauma. You know, it's hard to listen to the voice of the divine when we are still in trauma mode ourselves. So right now is the time to be working through that. And again, go and check out alleduzetclasses.com if you feel like you need some help in that arena. Um, the free offerings I'm going to rep uh, recommend the intuitive calibration class. It's only 12 minutes, but it can change your life and give you these tools that you need to be able to tune into yourself and feel your own body and feel, uh, you know, if you are being led this way or that way, like who's doing the leading and just learning how to trust yourself more. So that is what I will recommend to you. If you feel like you need some help in this area and you don't know what to do next, go here, take that 12 minute class, watch it on double speed for six minutes. Okay. Um, and then practice it. Practice makes perfect. And that is the thing right now we have to practice listening. Okay. That is the only thing that we can count on, you know, in ever really. I mean, you just never know when something is going to happen that, you know, you're going to get in a car accident or, um, I don't know. I have, I have a lot of people that I know lately are passing, um, you know, from this world to the next kind of by surprise and like young people are passing at a higher rate than I think is normal. And, and you just never know. Okay. And you can't take anything with you except what is in your spirit, what is in your mind. So this is the time to focus on that. And like, yes, physical preparations can be good. I think food storage is great and water storage and all of that. But at any moment, those things can disappear. What cannot disappear is your faith. What cannot disappear is your ability to listen and be led to be at exactly the right place at the right time. So that is my final message to you is to remember to tune into your own connection with our divine source, because that is going to be the key for you. I can be wrong. All of this presentation, maybe I've interpreted it completely wrong. What, what we're looking at for the next five months and for the next year, I can be wrong, but that doesn't matter because the important thing is your connection with the divine if you have a strong connection with your source and you are listening every day and you're asking questions and you're saying, what do I need to know? What do I need to do? You know, when we are asking the questions, when we're listening for the answers and we're acting on the answers, even when they're scary or they don't make sense, that's when none of the rest of this stuff matters because we can rest assured that we will be in the right place at the right time. So that is the most important thing. And that's just what I want to leave you with today. So go ahead and take a deep breath we're all in the right place at the right time. You're discovering this stuff exactly at the right place at the right time. So breathe it in. You're on the right path for you. And I think that you are about to supercharge that path. And I believe in you. So thank you for being here. And I hope that you have a great day.